Hello everyone, Zane here and welcome to another Final Fantasy XIV video. Today I'm going to show you guys how to make guild with your dailies in Final Fantasy XIV. This is going to be for battle jobs only, so no crafters or gatherers are needed. So we're going to go from the lowest amount of guild to the highest. Now remember, this is daily stuff only, not weeklies. The weeklies might be another video. So the lowest way of getting guild is of course to do the tribe quests. So the first thing you're going to be doing is the Akrasadar in the Thavnirian area. So you need to do the side quest down in this area here first, then Palakistan, then you're going to go back down to this area to do the chain quest that will all unlock the Arkham I already have a video on that, so I'll make sure to link it down below. So at max rank, we are getting 655 gil. I don't know if this is static throughout the entire leveling process, but this is how much you're going to get at max rank. You also want to do this for the tokens, which you can get a grade 9 material once per day, or one grade 10 every two days. You also want to do this for the tombstones that are capable, which is causality. In 6.4, it's going to be comedy. If you're doing this as leveling up your jobs, you'll get experience as well. Alright, so that is going to be number one. Next, we're going to go into Shadowbringers and we're going to be doing the Pixies. So next is the Pixie Tribe Quests. This is going to be in Ilmeg, and you must complete the last main story quest in Ilmeg, Wheel Turns, or The Wheel Turns. Then, once you have done that, you are going to be going into the Crystarium and look for the quest Manic Pixie Dream Realm. This is going to be, I think, near the Pendants inside the Crystarium. So this is where you unlock the Pixies. Again, I don't remember if the guild is static, but you'll get 606 at the highest rank. You will get their currency, and then you'll get 15 Tombstones or Poetics, which can be used to trade in for gear. So make sure you do all three. And the uh, gill seems to be static of all three. Alright, so that is going to be for the Shadowbringers tribe quest. Now we're going to go into these Stormblood ones, where we are going to be doing the last two, which means that your Beast Tribe tokens is going to be used up, because you only get 12 per day. Alright, so I'll see you guys in the Stormblood area. All right, so here we are in Tamamizu with the Kojin. So simply do the main story quest. Tai goes in, Garleans go out in the Ruby Sea, which is the last quest in this zone. And then over here in the Asari zone, you are going to look for an NPC with the blue exclamation point icon over their head. This will help you unlock the Kojin Beast Tribe. So they are going to give us 615 kill for their max rank. Might be a bit less if you're under. You'll get their token and you'll get, again, 15 Poetics. And they're not static, so you're going to get more gill or less gill depending on your quest. Okay. Alright, so here we are in the fringes with the Ananta. First you must do the main story quest of Iron Conquer. Next, in Cashroom Orients, you'll do Hidden Truth, Quest Chain, up to Honest Truth. After that is done, you come to the Peering Stones here, and you must do the Chain Quest and New Contender up to Rose Blooms twice. After that, you will get a quest for the Ananta calling the Brooding Brood Mother. The Kojin, the quest was called Heaven Sent. Now the thing is that the gill is going to be static for both, apparently. 615 for the first one, 680, and then for the last one was 550. And again, token 1500 Poetics and stuff like that. So again, the gill is the same for both tribes at the highest rank. So again, you might get less gill if you're just starting out with these tribe quests, but that is going to be the last tribe quest that you do. If you don't want to do these, you could do the Aroma Born ones, which unlock at the Grand Company of each individual city-state, which I think give you more gill. But uh, for these ones, you're going to be doing the Ananta, the Kojin, the Pixies, and then the Arcus Adara. So that is going to be the lowest amount of guild that you can get on the daily. Next is going to be the hunt. The hunt is the second highest amount of guild that you can get daily. Now you must be second lieutenant in your grand company. If you need help on that, I do have a video to help you along the way. All right, you're looking for the quest, The Hunt Begins. Each grand company will have a different NPC to find it. I think for Limsa Limsa, it's going to be this guy right here. Or it could be the uh, lieutenant over there. I don't remember, but it's one of those two. So let's look out for that. Now, a rumor born is where you unlock the hunt first. After this, the subsequent hunt throughout the expansions will unlock because of that. 
So you have your daily hunts for Realm Reborn. You have three mobs you have to kill on the open world. You will get a thousand gil for each kill after completing those. And then you have two fates that will give you two thousand gil each. The fates will differ on daily. I personally would skip these if the fates don't spawn very often. Alright, so you'd be losing out on 4,000 gil. So the gil would be static every single time. So that is going to be for Realm Reborn. You will get Allied Seals, which is the hunt currency for Realm Reborn, Centurion Seals for Heaven's Ward, and Stormblood, and the Nuts for Endwalker and Shadowbringers. It's important that you do these for the Aetherite tickets to teleport freely, otherwise you're going to be spending gil just to do the hunt. And the hunt billmaster under others will take care of your Aetherite tickets. The other way to get these Aetherite tickets is through the Blue Mage Carnival weekly. So I would honestly would recommend stocking up on these as much as possible. Because you will be using that for the hunt. Alright, so that's how you unlock the hunt in A Rumber Born. Now let's go over to the Heavensward area in Foundation and I'll show you guys where to unlock the hunt there. Alright, so the Heavensward area coming to the Forgotten Knight. Now, in order to unlock the hunt here, again, you have to do the Rumberborn hunt first. Then you'll have to get to level 53 to let the hunt clan begin. Then level 56 for better build hunting. And then level 60 for elite and dangerous to unlock all three. Now, they got rid of the fates and just gave us all mobs in the open world. This gill is going to be static to every hunt build mark in the game so from heaven's ward to endwalker the guild will be the same for every single time you do the hunt so we have a thousand up to five so we got five thousand guild for that number two again five thousand guild for that and then the final one will give you 1500 for each all right so that like i said it's going to be static through the entire game and most likely going into 7.0 and beyond so that is how you unlock the hunt in Heaven's Ward. So now we're going to go into Kugani for the next set of hunts. Alright, so in Kugani, the hunt is going to be right here. Now you're going to have to do the quests. One star veteran clan hunt at level 61. Two star at level 63. Three star at level 66. And then the last one which is A ranks at level 70. Again, like I said, the gill is static. No matter what. You will always get a thousand for the first two. And 1500 for the last. Next is going to be Shadowbringers. Which is going to be in the Crystarium. Alright, so here we are in the Crystarium. So you're going to have to complete some quests before again unlocking the hunt. So the first thing is level 70, nuts to you. Then level 73, two nuts, two nutty. Level 76, how do you like three nuts? And level 80, too many nutters. Clearly this is Koji Fox 13 year old self coming out to play. So these are what you're going to be doing to unlock the hunt in the Crystarium. Or for Shadowbringers. And yet again, the kill is again static to 1000 for each. And then 1500 for the last. Okay. And finally is going to be Endwalker in Old Charlayan. Alright, so here we are in Ultra Land at the pier next to the lead quests. In order to unlock these, you're going to be doing the quest at level 80, a hunt for specimens, the specimen came from the moon at 83, a hunt for the ages at 89, and the A ranks, a perfect specimens at level 90. And again, the gill will be static, just to show you again. There. Alright, so that is going to conclude the second highest amount of gil you can get per day is to the hunt. And now for the number one. Alright, and now for the number one, which is going to be the duty finder and doing your roulettes. This is excluding mentor because not everybody can become a mentor right now. So this is best done at level cap of 90. So you get expert roulette, 90 roulette, 50, 60, 70, 80, leveling, trial, main scenario, guild test, alliance, and normal raids. Now the thing is you are going to want to do this in Venture in Need. Alright, as you see here. This is going to require you to become either a healer, DPS, or a tank. I recommend becoming all three. This way you guys can pick and choose. 
Now, as you can see, they do change after a while. So the thing you have to remember is that this applies once you go into the dungeon. If the queue does not pop and this thing changes, then you're going to have to exit your queue and re-queue as the adventure in need if it changes. So if it changes right at the last second before you enter the duty, guess what? You lost your bonus. So make sure that your queue pops and your adventure in need is what you're queuing as. I made that mistake when I was doing this for testing purposes. So you will get in as an adventure in need, the guild that shows on, on the screen, and then you will get a, another set of gill at the end. Remember, anything past Heaven's Ward, the mobs will not drop gill. They will drop the gill at the end of the dungeon at the final boss. This is to cut down on information to the server. So that is going to be for expert and level 90. 50, 60, 70, 80 will give you 72 again for adventure in need. If you get a level 50 dungeon from Armor Reborn, you'll get gill from the monster drops. Leveling will give you 12,000 for adventure in need. Trial will give you 4320. Main scenario, 7200. Guild test, 1800. Alliance, 7200. Normal raid, 1440. And if you're doing the mentor, you get 7200, but again, only some certain people can have mentor. Frontline doesn't give you any gill from what I remember. Okay, so the gill will be varied on depending on what you get in your leveling and your 50, 60, 70, 80 roulette. Also remember, doing the alliance raid, you'll get a thousand gill per boss kill. Right, so that's adding on to that. So I'm going to be going through all of these and show you guys the amount of gill that you can get at the end. I believe if you're doing the leveling stuff, there is a extra bonus gill you get from doing a swift completion if someone is new, so keep that in mind as well. All right, so let's get into it. So upon completing Expert Roulette, you get 7200, 7200, and 4800 for opening the chest. Upon doing the 90 Roulette, you will get the same, 7200, 7200, and then 4800 for opening the chest. 50 to 80 Roulette, if you get anything in Rumber Born, the gill will drop from the enemies but not the final chest. Everything else will drop from the chest. So you get 9,000 and 7,200 for the roulette and adventure in need, respectively. Leveling roulette, you'll get 7,380, 12,000 gil, and 4,620 for the chest, depending on what you got. Trial roulette, you get 12,000 gil, and 4,320 for doing the roulette. The main scenario, you get 9,000 gil, and 7,200 for completing it. Guild has roulette is 1120, 1800, and then a small amount of guild when talking to the NPC to exit the duty. Alliance roulette will give you 12,000, 7200, 1500 for the last boss, and then 1000 guild for the lesser bosses after opening the chests. And for normal raid, you'll get 12,000, and then 1440 for the duty. And that's it. Alright guys, so that is all of the roulettes completed. Now this is the guild that I'm roughly looking at after completing the roulettes. Again, this will differ and vary depending on what you get. This is from the tribes and this is from the hunt, excluding the fates. So let's take it all out and see what we have total. One thing I want to recommend is make sure you roll on all the loot in every dungeon. Doesn't matter if you're expecting someone to roll need. You roll, need, greed, whatever, do not pass on that gear because you're going to be using it for something else. So after all that is done, I'm looking at roughly 236,048 gil per day. Again, it will vary. Now, you're going to take all the gear that you've got into the dungeons. This is what basically I all have. These here, the Crypt Lurker stuff comes from the poetic turn-ins that I did with my tombstones. So this is all the gear that I've gotten through the roulettes. So you're going to take all these out. And then you're going to go to your grand company. All right, so let's go. All right, so what you're going to do at your grand company, make sure you have the seal sweetener to buff up from your free company if you have one, or use the squadron manuals if you have that too. If you don't have either or, then you're just going to take the base. So you're going to pass in your gear at your grand company. 
make sure that you have the expert deliveries unlocked, and then you're gonna pass in all the gear that you have gotten through the roulettes. So I did my best to drain my Grand Company seal, so I only have three. So we're gonna pass all this stuff in. So after turning all that in, I end up with 62,307 Grand Company seals for all that. Again, this will also vary depending on how much loot that you get and what you get through the roulettes. So then what you do is take that and then you're going to go and buy yourself something that goes for 360 gil. Usually I go for duck bones, but because I use them to drain my Grand Company seals, we're going to go with something else that sells for 360. So I'm going to go with the Black Cinnabar, which I'm still not using all my seals. So we're walking away with 103, again this will vary, Black Cinnabar that goes for 360 gil. So next, what you do is go to a vendor. Now we're gonna vendor these Cinnabar for straight up kill. All right, remember, 236,048. Selling these, I now made 37,080. Again, that will change depending on how much your gear you get and how much the gear goes for. So that's 273,128 kill that I managed to get just by doing my dailies and passing any gear that I got with the buffs up. Now, do I recommend you guys doing this every single day? Oh, hell no. I got bored doing this once, just for this video. But if you want to do some of this, you can. You don't have to do everything on here. But just know that the roulettes are the most important things because you do get tombstones that you're going to be needing. So if anything, do your roulettes. That's the best advice I can give you if you don't want to do all this stuff. All right, because these are the most lucrative ways of getting gil in this game so if anything do your roulettes and that's it if you guys want all right so that's pretty much going to be it for this video thank you so much for watching don't forget to leave a like comment and subscribe to my channel if you're new for more final fantasy 14 content and join the first brood if you guys want to join my discord server the link is in the about section down below and if you like what i hear i do on youtube i do have youtube memberships available so until next time if you ever walk in the glorious light of lord bahamut always remember to keep forging ahead good luck